this video demonstrate how to use the compounded type of impulse turbine that is a two stage of impulse turbine in this case in an impulse turbine the steam issues from a nozzle with a speed of 600 meter per second blade speed is 120 velocity is compounded by passing the steam through a ring of moving blades through the ring of fixed blades and finally through the ring of moving blades and this data is given to you the exit angles are given and velocity coefficients are given we need to find out diagram efficiency under these circumstances and if mass load is 5 kg per second. So what we are given is that the it is passing through the ring of moving blades. So before moving blades we must have a ring of nozzle. Then first row of moving blade. Then we have fixed blade and then we have second row of moving blade. So we have a through the fixed blade. So fixed blade. This fixed blade basically act as a nozzle and finally through a ring of moving blade so we have second row of moving blade the exit angles of the nozzle is the inlet angle to the moving blade that is alpha 1 equals to 18 the exit angle of uh, moving blade is moving blade is 30 degree and the fixed row is 25 degree that is 25 degree here and we have given the velocity coefficient equal to 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 0 0.9 and the inlet velocity is given as V1 equal to 600 and K is equal to 0 0.8 for this one is VR2 by VR1 when it comes from here the exit velocity is uh, V2 and inlet velocity is V3 so that is again reduced by 0 0.85 times and when we are in the moving blade, the K is defined as VR4 by VR3 that equals to 0.9. So we have this data available with us for the first stage and the second stage. And the value of U is given as 120. Our scale is 1 cm equals to 50 meter per second. So let construct start from the first stage. Here A to B represents the blade velocity. And since U is equals to 120 divided by 50 that is equals to 2.4 now alpha 1 is equal to 18 degree so we'll construct alpha 1 equal to 18 degree and we know v1 equal to 600 so 50 divided 600 divided by 50 that equals to 12 cm and now we'll complete the inlet triangle using the horizontal and vertical and we obtain the point c a to c represents vw1 and this one represents vf1 and you can measure this value as 11.4 uh, and this value is 3.7 VF1 is 3.7 now you can join B and D to obtain VR1 and VR1 is uh, 9.7 similarly you can measure the blade inlet angle that equal to 22 degree now we will do the computation for K which is equals to 0.8 and we know the beta 2 so this data is sufficient to go for outlet triangle so we have we have k equal to point 0.8, vr2 by vr1 and vr1 is 9.7. So 9.7 multiplied by point 0.8 will be 7.8 and beta2 equal to 20. So triangle A, B and towards E is beta2. So we construct beta2 equal to 20. And on this one I will cut a length of 7.8 cm. So at this point we record the value of 7.8. So we got point E. Now from E we draw perpendicular and horizontal line just like this to obtain the point F and we can record the value of VW2 as well as V2 and VF2 and we obtain VF2 is equal to 2.7 VW2 equals to 5 and the value of V2 is equals to 5.7. Now since the blade velocity remains same we will draw a perpendicular from A and perpendicular from B and blade velocity U remains same so now we enter into the second stage where alpha 3 is given as 25 so we will construct an angle of 25 and we know that from this relation K equals to that is this relation V3 divided by V2 equal to 0.85 and V2 is 5.7 so 5.7 multiplied by 0 0.85 I will get 4.8 so from G and angle equal to 23 25 degree I will obtain the point D on this one line I will take a distance equals to 
again I will close down this at the perpendicular horizontal and I can measure the value of Vf3 uh, and this value is equals to Vw3. So Vf3 come out to be 2 and Vw3 come out to be 4.4. So this triangle is just a repetition of this triangle. And now we'll join the point H with point D to record the value of Vr3 for the second stage and it come out to be 2.8 and we can measure the value of beta 3 here also. Now the beta of 3 come out to be 45. Now we are in the blade outlet triangle so we'll use the relation k equals to 0.9 vr4 by vr3 vr3 is 2.8 vr2 equal to 2.5 and beta 4 is equal to 30 so beta 4 is equal to 30 so I construct beta 4 equal to 30 and cut a length of vr2 equals to 2.5 so I get the point E and from this I will draw perpendicular and horizontal to finish this if we join the G and E that will record V2 GK will be represented as uh, VW4 but remember that is negative value and this value is K to E is called as VF2 is 1.25 so in this fashion we can complete the first stage as well as second stage and if you notice this value is 11.4 and in comparison to this, this VW4 actually so it's a small correction, there is a VW4 you have to read as minus 0.2 centimeter and VF4 that equal to this distance 8K to E is 1.25C to obtain the blade efficiency we will compute, we will make the addition of all velocity vectors but this velocity vector is rightward so this is positive, this is leftward so this is also positive this one is rightward so positive and this one is also rightward so sec this outlet is rightward so that is why it was taken as minus value divide multiplied by u divided by half v1 square substitute all these value 11.4 is vw1 vw2 is 5 vw3 is a 4.4 and vw4 since rightward is minus 0.2 u is 2.4 and half v1 square which is a VA1 square is 12 square so your blade efficiency come out to be 68.66 percent. As power is concerned we have to make the product of mass flow rate multiplied by VW1 plus VW2 plus VW3 plus VW4 remember all these values are positive except VW4 which is equals to 0.2 multiplied by our scale which is equals to 1 cm multiplied by 50 and again U is 2.4 multiplied by scale that equal to 50 so approximate power come out to be 618 kilowatts as far as the maximum efficiency is concerned for multi-stage maximum efficiency is given as cos square alpha 1 and alpha 1 is 18 so cos square alpha 1 equal to 90.45 90 that is the maximum possible efficiency for two